God of grace, we offer you our lives. We confess that we're often stingy in our gifts of time or talents or treasures. We confess our addiction to the drugs of consumerism and self. And that as your church, we have often fallen headlong into the culture's seduction. Forgive us and free us to joyful simplicity, that we may be signs of grace to your world. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So we're all supposed to be the salt and the light, but there's a problem we have, and the problem is a faith issue. We have too many unbelieving believers. So we need some believing believers. Believers that believe that God is who he says he is. Believers who believe that God can do what he says he can do. And I wonder whether we are just so busy trying to be amazing that we are no longer amazing God with our faith. We're so busy trying to impress ourselves and others that we're no longer trying to impress God with our amazing faith. I think the God of the universe is waiting to be amazed by someone that's actually got a little bit of faith. Because he said, only the faith of a mustard seed. Someone that would dare to step out of the boat, like Peter. But no, we're busy. We need to be amazed. I need to just show everyone, just, just show everyone how authentic I am these days. Just how real I am. I'm just going to go out and take a very, very simple selfie of myself. And this is very funny to me because... I recently had dinner with a friend of mine, and while I was waiting for them to show up, I'm in my car, and I'm looking at the car in the parking lot behind me, and there's this young lady who is sitting there, and she's got her phone up. And we all know what that means. That, that's that selfie mode. She's trying to find that perfect light and that perfect angle. So you can just show people that this is me, my spontaneous, natural self. I need to have the right lighting. I need to have the right angles, the right filter. And I gotta crop it and I gotta post it at just the right time. And I've gotta upload it and, and put me in my most spontaneous natural self and just put hashtag blessed. And then we're wondering why we're not seeing signs and wonders and miracles or the revival that we're all so desperate for. Because we're so busy trying to be amazing. We're no longer in a church in prayer, in a prayer closet, amazing God with our faith. See, it takes a faith beyond ourselves to believe that we can do incredible things. It takes a power beyond ourselves to do them. In the right hands, an ordinary item can, can be extraordinary. A simple twig can, can be more than just a stick. So the question is, what is in your hands? So we're going to Exodus 4 today. This is very popular, something I know very well, Exodus 4, 2 through 4. So there's a reason why I was asking Cooper for some help, because I was still going in my head what I was going to say today. But um, so chapter 4, 2, 3, 4. And so the, the Lord said to, to Moses, what is that in your hand? And he goes, a stick. It was his staff. And God said, cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. It became an asp. It became a snake. And Moses flees from it because I was watching the kids last night, and they were in here doing gymnastics and hide-and-seek and everything. And all of a sudden, I heard this one squeal, it's a spider! And then there were like 15,000 kids going around stomping it out. And, and I'm like, oh, that spider's probably scared to death right now. But imagine if a snake had crawled through and had entered the sanctuary, how alarming we would be. And Moses fled from it like most of us would. And the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and he caught it. And it became a, a rod again. It became his staff again in his hand. It's a stick. 
an ordinary stick in his hand. And this is a, this is one of the most, to me, miraculous story of God using people. And it's a story of God using Moses. But it's really a story of, of how God wants to use you. And he wants to use me in troubling times like we find ourselves in nowadays. For 40 years, Moses had been hiding in the desert, camouflaging himself from his calling, running from his calling, trying to stay hidden and inconspicuous. And that's why when the voice spoke out of the burning bush, it said, take your shoes off because I'm tired of you running from your call. I'm tired of you running in intimidation and fear from what I've, I've called you to do. You've been running from, from the mission and, and the assignment that I've that I have for your life. Don't run from it. If ever there was an hour for us to run to the call and the plan and the purpose of God as a church, as individuals, this is the hour to take your shoes off, to take your running equipment off and stand on holy ground and, and let God use you like he wants to use you. Moses was full of fear, though, something I'm sure we can all relate to at times. I remember when God called me to preach. For I heard the call and I felt the call and I told my pastor at the time, I said, I said, Frankie, I hear myself being called and I feel myself being called. Ignore that. I got plans. And then I had a three, a three month debate with God because I felt so inadequate. I was terrified. I knew that he called me, but I felt totally unequipped, totally insufficient. And he said, he said, God, you know, Moses said to God, God, if you really want me to do this, you're going to have to give me a sign. And I went to my faith mentors at Lavelle United Methodist Church, my home church, and I said, I need you all to pray for me. And they were like, what are we praying for? I said, discernment. I want to know I'm listening to God's voice and not mine. You're going to have to give me a sign, God, because for three months I was arguing with him. I was calling him names I shouldn't be calling him. I was calling him crazy. He didn't know what he was doing. And God asked him a question. And God sent me this actual verse. And he asked me a question. And I'm asking you a question. What is in your hand? And Moses said, I have this stick, this shepherd staff. This is all, all I've got. Maybe you walked in the church with a string. I don't know. Maybe you've got, maybe you had you know, a cup of coffee in your hand. And he said, throw it on the ground. And when he threw his staff on the ground, it turned into a snake. And the next verse said, and Moses fled. I don't blame him. Do any of you blame Moses for fleeing from a snake? But notice before, that before God could use him, it requires Moses to go back and confront his fear. Pick it up again. Pick that stick up again, that snake up again. So the Bible said he picked up the serpent by the tail, and when he did, it turned back into a stick. And that stick looks so normal. The stick looks so common. They're all over the place. We could go out to any place around here, and we can find lots of sticks. So ordinary. God said, I can take what's in your hand. I don't need you to have something that you think you have to have. I'll use what you got, and I'll turn it into something. Turn it into something supernatural. If you'll get your fingerprints off of it, make sure that when I do it, you don't begin to rob me of the glory. I want you to do it. As long as it's in your hand, it's ordinary. It's normal. It's average. It has no power to do anything. But the moment you lay it down, the moment you turn it over to God, let him use it. Put it in God's hands. It will become supernatural. But don't you dare, when you pick it back up, act like it's about you. We want to go back to being just a stick. And so he said, and Moses, when you're standing at the Red Sea, I brought you and, and two and a half million Israelites out of Egyptian bondage and 
Pharaoh's army is closing in behind you, trying to recapture you. I want you to take that ordinary basic stick, and I want you to hold it up, and I'll part the Red Sea. And you'll go through the impossible to the promised land. Because sometimes all God needs is a stick. And Moses, when you get out of the wilderness and you're thirsting to death, you haven't had any water to drink for, for three days, and you come upon the pool of Mara, and when you get there, the waters will be bitter. But I want you to, I want you to see a tree. And God showed him a tree. And he took a branch off the tree. And when he touched the tree with that branch of wood, that stick suddenly, uh, uh, the bitter, the bitter turned sweet. The bitter water turned sweet. Because sometimes all God needs is an ordinary, average stick. And when the axe handle, when the axe head flew off of the handle, the head flew off the handle of the axe when they were building the school and the prophets and two kings. The Bible said that the prophet walked over and picked up a stick and touched the Jordan River, and that, that axe handle had, had gone into the river and sunk to the bottom, and when he took the ordinary, plain, average, common stick, and he touched the water with it in faith, the Bible said the axe head began to swim in the water, came up from the water, past the fish, past all the things, the snakes or whatever whatever was in the water came all the way up, did the backstroke across the Jordan River, jumped up to the axe stick, and they, they went right back to building. Because God, all he needs sometimes is an average stick. And when God was ready to redeem the entire world, he allowed his son to die at Calvary on two sticks. Two sticks called a cross because his plan is not something sensational. People who are super duper, he says, I want ordinary, average. I want normal people. You think you're a mess? I want you. He says, I want ordinary, average, normal people who use what I've given them and I will transform it into something supernatural, and I will bless them exceedingly, abundantly, above all they could ask or even think of. So let's just think and take a second to thank God that he can use whatever is in your hand, whatever is going on in your life. A simple shepherd stick. It's time to quit thinking that we're inadequate. Quit thinking that we can't do it. Quit thinking we don't have it. Quit thinking, well, we'll just wait until everything's perfect and we've got this all abundance and we're doing the supernatural because we got the supernatural to do it. Quit thinking you're inadequate. Quit thinking it's too big and you're too small. Quit thinking God can't use you. The Lord said, I'm not looking for what you think I'm looking for. I'm looking for ordinary people, people who have already given what they need. They just never really surrendered it to him. Now, in order for God to turn the ordinary stick, the ordinary stick into something supernatural, he had to let go of it. Moses had to let go of it. He had to surrender it to God. He had to let go of it, he had to surrender completely to God, and God transformed it into something supernatural. He didn't ask what's in your head, because the miracle is not dependent on how smart you are. He didn't say that the miracle is dependent on your bank account, or how many people show up in church, or, or what you have going on, or you being perfect. No. Not on how much you know the Bible. If you need wisdom, you can ask for it. You can develop that. I can develop that. I can get an education. He didn't say what's in your head. He didn't say what's in your mouth. When you first start out and, and, and you've never spoken in front of people, you've never been in public and before a crowd, you get the stammers. You get a little stutter to you, just like Moses did. But God said the miracle is not dependent upon how well you can speak. The miracle is not dependent on how brilliant you are. 
It's not by might. It's not by power. He said, what's in your hand? Give me what I've already given you. Surrender. All God needs is what he's already given you, and he'll use you. You might feel like you're inadequate. You might feel like you're a mess. You might feel like you're too young. You might feel like you're too old. You might feel like you're in a deficit when it comes to life in general. Well, God equips us with the tough stuff we go through. He says, you're not just going to go through stuff, but you're going to pick up something out of it that I'm going to use in a supernatural way. If you've been through the desert of, of divorce, God's not through with you. If you've been through the desert of addiction, a jail term, bad choices, anger management, fear, anxiety, feeling of, of being less than, God can use the very thing that you're going through later. He says, I'm going to revisit that. I'm going to cause it to come alive in a supernatural way, and I'll use it against the enemy. God can take simple, simple people and use them magnificently. Take simple business owners, simple single moms, retirees, moms feeling like a disaster. They can take a hood mom, bless them and exalt them and blow their world up in a powerful and prosperous way. You know, where, where they're just, I mean, I mean, doing things that you never dreamed you could do before. That's not the biggest supernatural thing in the story. It's the fact that when Moses picked the snake up, it went back to being just a regular stick. When you first start coming to church, you're just a regular stick. You needed him. And how did you need him? But somehow you think you don't need him now. Can we go back to being a simple stick, simple ordinary stick? John chapter 6. A great crowd had followed Jesus to a remote area to hear him teach. It's getting late in the day, almost dark. And Jesus said to his disciples, you need to feed the people. They're too tired to go home hungry. They said, in effect, are you kidding me, Jesus? There's like 15,000 people out there. We're out in the desert. The nearest Walmart is 300 miles away. It's Sunday. Chick-fil-A is not open today, sir. They came up with all the good reasons why it's impossible. And Jesus simply asked them, what do you have? They went out in the crowd. They came back in a few minutes and said all we could find was this little boy's lunch. Five barley loaves, two fish. Five loaves of bread and two fish. What is that among so many that need fed? It's a logical question. What good is this one little lunch going to do when we need lunch for 15,000 people? See, God doesn't ask you to figure out how it's going to happen. He just asks to use what he's given you already. To not discount, to not live thinking you're at a deficit, but to believe that he can take what seems small to you and make something great out of it. What is this among so many? God, all I have is five loaves of bread and two fish. See, before we can do anything, before we can feed, before we can do this, we need something greater. We need more talent. We need more wisdom. We need more training. We need more people. We need more money. God is not asking you for what you don't have. He's asking you to trust him with what you do have, with what's in reach. But Brent, all I have is a little lunch. God can take the little. He can take the little and he can multiply it. Just have a little faith. Little faith can move a mountain. I just have a walking stick. You can part the Red Sea. 
I just have the jawbone of a donkey, something I found close. You can defeat an army. You can break the addiction. You're not lacking. You have exactly what you need. And sometimes on purpose, God will let you be outnumbered. He'll let the door closed, let you not feel qualified for the position. He takes that small thing and he breathes on it. And I love the question so much that God asked Moses in Exodus 4 too. The Lord asked him, what is in your hand? And he says, a staff. I can picture Moses just looking at the stick he was holding. The thing, it's just a stick. Here's Moses. He was raised in, in a royal palace as the adoptive son of a Pharaoh's daughter. He had every single advantage. He was lavish with luxury. Now he's living in the, the hot, dusty desert, and all he has is a simple stick. But wait. Don't miss what happens next. God instructs Moses to take the one thing that he does have, his staff, and to throw it on the ground. And when he does, it becomes a snake. Then God tells him to pick it up by the tail, like we all know we're supposed to with snakes. Sarcasm, sarcasm. And it becomes a stick again when he picks it back up. The point is not that this was a miraculous or magical stick. The point is that even an ordinary broken off branch can be used for wondrous things when it's in the hands of one who is called and equipped by God. And God used that very same stick <coughs> through all of Exodus. God used it as a lesson for Moses in the desert. He used it to display his power to the Pharaoh. God used it when he parted the Red Sea. God is not limited by what we don't have. Moses was focused on the ability that he lacked. God demonstrated that he already provided everything Moses needed. All Moses had to do was surrender. Just give it to God and follow his instructions. So quit worrying about whatever it is that you think you lack, whether ability, support, or resources. Offer to God whatever it is that you already have in your hand and watch him do incredible things. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, please help us to, to lean into you. Even in our moments of fear and doubt, help us to, to trust you and to know that you are our source of everything. In your name we pray. Amen.